Hey there, it's Dr. Fee Enkman from Burnout to Bliss. And today we're talking about from procrastination to productivity, how to love yourself into action. Stay tuned. Hey there, it's Dr. Fee Enkelman from Burnout to Bliss, and we love helping women to transform, overcome burnout, reconnect with themselves and find their bliss. And that means up-level their health, their career, their relationships. And I'm joined today by the gorgeous Dr. Jagatambe Narayani. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. So Good glad you can you. join us. <laughs> and, and today we're talking about... Shifting out of procrastination to really start embracing productivity. You know, there's it's this common symptom that we see time and time and time again in women who are feeling burnt out with depletion, little left in the tank to give to their job. And what happens is that they start to spiral into this space of, oh, procrastination, losing motivation, and in turn, it feeds itself, doesn't it, Dr. J? It certainly does. Yeah, it's a bit of a vicious cycle, this one. And it's a very common symptom of our, of our culture at large and of um, the women that we see in, in burnout. So, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a snowball. It goes from, you know, the, um, the original, like, part where we feel a bit anxious or we feel a bit of pressure about something and then we avoid that. And that gets rewarded internally um, through various mechanisms, which we can go into. Yeah. This is that behavior. And so then we keep doing it. But at the same time, we're growing this, this pressure, this guilt, this shame. Every Just time. do it. <laughs> yeah, That's it. exactly. So, yeah, it's a bit of a snowball. Um, yeah, it goes, it goes deep. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So, look, if you are someone who's feeling that, I guess, that powerlessness that can come when you find yourself day after day procrastinating, knowing what it is that you want to get done, knowing with full awareness that your to-do list is getting a little bit out of control and yet finding yourself acting in a way that is in alignment with who you normally would be or how you value yourself, it's okay. You're not alone. And we're here just to remind you and inspire you that there is another way of approaching it and we were going to title this right uh how to give yourself uh, give yourself love so you can get shit done and <laughs> we want to actually step it out looking at more strategy as well as the mindset piece and I'm certain that um you're going to for, for, if you're tuning in and you've listened to lots of things on productivity you're going to get something to take away for certain okay so stay tuned because we are speaking for you and our intention is that you will definitely get something to take away. So in terms of procrastination, it does go hand in hand with depletion and burnout. As Dr. Jagatame explains, you know, it becomes this vicious cycle. And what I notice is, and this is a cultural and, and societal um, conditioning, is that there is this um, desire to find a solution on it by focusing on willpower. You know, oh, we get frustrated with ourselves. Oh, gosh, getting in my own way. Oh, okay, this time it's going to be different. I'm definitely going to do it this time. You know, I'm, I'm definitely going to get through my to-do list or I'm going to, I'm going to, going to, I'm going to get to it. And so we end up beating ourselves up thinking that willpower alone is the solution. And the thing with willpower is that it's a very, important but limited commodity it's a limited source and when we're tired or stressed out or out of routine hello burnout hello <laughs> then what happens is that goes out the window and we're left playing out these cycles these patterns and of which procrastination is a part of it and a symptom of it and in turn it fuels itself 
And when we notice that we are procrastinating and not getting our shit done and, you know, leaving things, important things on the table or forgetting about things or avoiding things, then we can really fall into a cycle of shame and failure and the rest. And, you know, I've just come from doing a beautiful coaching call. We were talking about this with my clients today. And really, if we truly want to get to the heart of why procrastination can show up, it's really having an understanding that for some of us, it's what we're allowing drive the show. And what I mean by that is that we all have unconscious programs. It's that, you know, if we could listen to what our, what we're really telling ourselves, if we could really listen to that tape that's playing out and again and again and again, there are themes there of I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, I don't belong, I'm invisible, I'm unsafe, that, you know, just by the very nature of being human, right, Dr. Jagatambe, it's often what we can catch ourselves, you know, Mm. running the show. Mm. And in particular, that pattern of I'm not enough can really be the the thing that drives us as successful women and we're striving and we're striving and we get there and it's like, ooh, next, ooh, next. And our desire for that dopamine hit, which is the outcome, you know, we kind of build up a tolerance for it and in the end it's like we're not, we're not really addressing that that program of enoughness and in my experience and what I see with our clients is that it it contributes to why people end up finding themselves disconnected, depleted and procrastinating. Did you want to add something to that, Dr. Jagatambe? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a great summary. And um, I think there's so many levels that you can look at how procrastination runs and how it embeds itself in our lives. And, you know, it's like you've just described that, you know, how we basically have these experiences and they happen early on in life and we get conditioned, you know, we get conditioned into um, seeking our basic needs in certain ways, seeking our need for approval, seeking our need for love in certain ways. And these needs aren't wants their needs you know every human has these basic needs so we're not going to outgrow them we're not going to go okay now I'm a teenager I don't need them now I'm in my 20s I don't need them you know now I'm 55 I don't need them Mm. it's it's perpetually there and so we will unconsciously seek to have our needs fulfilled um, either internally or externally because they're a need and no matter what our rational mind says or what our willpower wants to do if there's a human need not being met it will always trump the other thing that we think we're going to do because mm. we this is the need, you know, and unconsciously we'll always seek to have it met. And so, you know, when we start to look at procrastination, we can also understand this in that way because procrastination arises when we basically feel so much anxiety or so much pressure or stress about a certain thing um, that we're both trying to do the thing and repelled away from the thing and so what happens is as we approach you know this task whatever it is whatever meaning we've given this task or whatever conditioning that's now attached to this task um, gets triggered as we approach it and so if that if that meaning and those beliefs and that mindset starts to activate the things like oh my god what if I fail what if it's not good enough what if I'm not good enough you know then what that's doing is it's threatening our human need for love and approval. And so we're like, whoa, I'm not going to go there. And so we move away from that. And in the moment, our anxiety reduces, the pressure reduces, and we may move away from that and also engage in another activity. That's <laughs> you know, whether it's scrolling on Netflix or, you know, binging on potato chips or, you know, whatever it is, you know, um, alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever, it doesn't matter. Then we also reinforcing that, okay, I'm going to take myself away from that. But at the same time, you know, we're wanting to get this thing done and we know this thing's good for us. And so um, what arises in us is also a shame and a guilt and a sense of failure about not having achieved that thing we set out to do. And so that shame and that guilt and that, you know, those feelings further 
take us away from our human need and drive us further into that avoidance. Absolutely. And then again, next time we go and try that, all of that stuff, the icing on top that we've just created, that extra layer of guilt and shame, we remember that as well as all of the original pressure. And so it's even harder to approach that thing and get it done, you know, whether it's our, um, you know, our work, our, our diet. Exercise, our yeah. all the things we should be doing. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, there's, there's the, the basic behavioural principles that we can understand from a psychological perspective of how reinforcement works and how this trap, you know, basically keeps going because of that, the, re the immediate reinforcement of the relief of anxiety when we run away from something that's creating a bit of anxiety that gets reinforced. Oh, okay, my anxiety went down. So our brain thinks, oh, that was a good thing, even if it's totally incongruent with our values. And then our values drop in and say, oh, but I feel bad because I wanted to do this thing and now I failed. And so we create this narrative, which then gives us more bad or bad juju <laughs> and mm. then and so forth and so forth. And so, you know, it, it can get really entrenched. It can get so entrenched that we just, you know, we get so triggered by a thing. We won't even we won't even go there. We won't even talk about it because the shame gets so big or, you know, we feel so blocked and so perplexed as to why it is that we wanted yeah. to do this. Thing, but it just eludes us again and again and again despite our our conscious mind thinking I'm going to do it this time <laughs> this time I'll be different I'm just going yeah. to grind it harder I'm going to really make myself do it yes absolutely yeah yeah, so, beautiful. yeah, got a lot of compassion. yeah and I love that I mean we're really talking when we're talking about needs it's really that emotional aspect of us so there are different hierarchies there's different levels of what we can do as you're saying um how to or what's contributing to procrastination and within that then we can also recognize that there is a different way to actually meet that to yeah. actually resolve it to actually do something about it and and shift our story shift how we've been approaching things and do it in a powerful way rather than a all or nothing response, which is if we just focus on strategy alone, which is like time management or delegation, I don't other, other, you know, just purely strategy based without doing it, then we'll be good until we're not. And so it, it's, this is really about making sustainable changes because we just focus purely on strategy alone or like I mean in terms of systems or structures to help you to be more productive then it's going to be limited or go out the window when life happens when another little bit of stress happens where the the routine shifts a little bit where you know but this is the schedule for me to be most productive what wait my kid can't be sick right now no this is what has to happen here and and we want to control life so that we can perform better. But if we shift out of that mode to be actually being more and aligned and helping us to be strengthened and flow and collaborating and coming back and meeting ourselves so that we can really perform well in life, then I think that's a more sustainable and fun way of living and embracing and achieving and and, and being ultimately, right? Totally. Uh, yep, that's what we see time and time again. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So in terms of if we can break it into how we support women, and, and this is obviously isn't all of it because that, you know, <laughs> obviously we do weeks long of our courses, but simply a, a way to look at it is if we look at more of a mindset, heart set or vibrational piece. And then we can look at more of a sort of strategy and how that can be supporting. They all interrelate each other. It's not like, oh, I do this and then that doesn't influence strategy. No, that's not true. And we like to start with a mindset, heart set, vibrational piece, because if we can get out of that, the symptom of the spiral of, oh, there's nothing that can be done or, you know, I'm a terrible person or I'm a failure, then mm -hmm. actually you'll come up with bigger solutions or a different solution. You might even come up with a more amazing solution to your procrastination 
than what we could give you because you've shifted out of the problem and you can see with a different perspective and now you know for certain exactly what needs to happen to be more, you know, to, to ensure that you don't procrastinate and you're more productive. Mm -hmm. So I think anytime we come to a decision, it's, you know, we are so wired to be solution focused gals, you know, especially in our community, we're the ones that people come to, to solve problems. And I love solving problems. And then what can happen when we can't solve our own problem, which is procrastination and stuff, but we can be very, very limited in seeing those solutions. So if we can pause before we jump and act to really focus on our relationship to procrastination, to really focus on our what is really at the core, what is really at play, what's the real opportunity here to shift our state, then from there move into the strategy piece. It's so much more powerful, right, Dr. Jagatambe? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's really how we roll, right? It's like if, you know, so much of how we behave in the world and how we can operate in the world, if we change our you know, mindset and we change how we feel about it and we change our inner, you know, relationship with that, it completely plays out differently, you know, with very little effort in the strategy ways, you know, you just put a few little pepper, a few little strategies in and already you've got a profound solution. And so it's like, that's why we really look at, okay, so what is the, you know, what's really going on in procrastination in terms of our inner dynamic? And um, I think you touched on this before, you know, like, there's the, the thoughts that we have about things, you know, when things are going on, you know, certain situations, certain in environments or, you know, situations will trigger a thought for us. But pretty quickly, you know, our thoughts, if we, if we have that happen again and again and again, they turn into beliefs, you know. Mm. And then pretty quickly a belief about ourselves can turn into an identity. And so that's how conditioning works. You know, we have a thought we get enough of those thoughts about ourselves. we believe something about ourselves, and that belief becomes a, you know, an identity. And so then we start to go, you know, I am a failure. I, I am. A I am I'm not I enough. Am. Yeah. yeah so am. Am. And then if we've got that underlying, you know, schema, we call it in psychology or, or you know, deeply held belief about ourselves or the world or whatever it is, then everything that we perceive gets filtered through that. And so there's this whole system in our brain, they've identified the reticular activating system, which is the job of this system is to sort out what data or sensory information and all of the information we get through our senses becomes conscious and what becomes unconscious. Because, you know, we're all the time experiencing so much, but the way we actually perceive the world is through our own lens, is through all of our conditioning. And so this, you know, if we have these schemas or these, deeply held beliefs about ourselves and the world, then what we start to perceive is confirmation of that. We're mm -hmm. always looking for, it's called the confirmation bias. And so if we start to hold these beliefs about ourselves, I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, I can't do it, you know, then we always find evidence. evidence. Of that. And then that <laughs> strengthens that thing. See? I'm terrible. Yeah. I'm really hopeless. I'm a really terrible yeah. person. And then we take that lens from this situation and we put it into another situation, another role, and all of a sudden we will pick ourselves apart as a yeah. mom or we take it over here and look over here and, oh, let's, let, let, let's look through that lens and ruin what we have over here. <laughs> <laughs> right. yep. Oh, yep. being a human is fun, isn't it? <laughs> it is fun, it can be. Um, so, yeah. And so basically, you know, once we start to understand this, though, then we've got leverage because we get to say, we get to step back from that process, you know, and say, okay, is this really true? You know, am I really this? Or is this just a belief that I'm carrying about myself? Is this just something I've decided to, you know, bring into my identity? But is it really who I am? Or is this just a bunch of thoughts and stories that I've conditioned myself into? And if we start to understand that, then already we're winning, you know, already we're stepping back. Then we get to look at, well, what is it that I really need? And how is it that I really want to feel in this? You know, and most of us don't want to feel crappy about ourselves for not getting stuff done and feel like failures or guilty or perplexed by our own actions. Most of us want to feel empowered and joyful and, um, 
you know, productive yeah. and able to have agency in our life. And so then we say, well, you know, how do we, how do we cultivate that? And one of the big things about cultivating that, which is sometimes shocking to us intelligent women, is that it's not just the mind that's involved in this, this process, you know, that actually a lot of power comes from our unconscious processes and those processes are greatly influenced by our emotional mm. attachments and our emotional needs. And so that's, you know, that's where we really start to get into this work and this, you know, play of meeting those needs, of identifying what are our real emotional needs and how do I meet them? And then what are the stories I've been telling myself? And if they're not helpful and I've been ta I've taken them into my identity, then I'm going to, you know, bring consciousness to that and systematically deconstruct that and construct the identity that is going to serve a life that I love and serve mm. my freedom. And so it's a bit of a, you know, it's a, it's a multi um, faceted approach, but ultimately we're changing our mindset and we're really deeply loving ourselves and meeting our needs and having compassion for ourselves and changing our MO, you know, around how we be with ourselves when we feel these patterns arise you know, the first step is to go, hey, hang on, like, I don't need to be beating myself up. I'm going to celebrate that I did this thing today rather than thinking, oh, well, I've done it for one day. Now I've got six more days to do. So will I even Yeah, it's not enough. I know I did that, but it's yeah. just not enough. Yeah. Let me put more pressure on myself. Let me turn yeah. a celebration into a criticism. But you exactly. can happen. Yeah. Oh, it's the, you know, it's the baseline. For Especially in procrastination. You can very happen. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, like turning that on its head and bringing consciousness to that and being supported to do that is so empowering. You know, we've seen it time and time again and it can just oh. create breakthroughs for people who have been like stuck in a certain area for years in their lives, decades. <laughs> and then suddenly the way we be with ourselves gives the leverage, the leverage builds on itself, you know, and then we talk strategy and certain strategies mm -hmm. will help to, to augment that. Yeah. But ultimately, you know, it's this change within, this compassion, this celebration, this meeting our emotional needs, you know, this loving ourselves so we can get shit done. And then Love ourselves, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So it's really, I mean, it's such a big distinction because in our community of incredibly successful women, mm -hmm. there is some very strong mindsets and mm. optimistic, positive thinkers. Mm -hmm. who are like yeah I get it I am more than enough I'm doing yeah I get it I get it I get it. I know I don't know why why do I feel this way why why is this happening mm -hmm. why am I catching myself like I get I'm more than enough I can I, I appreciate what I want to do is feel worthy and I see how I'm stopping that and it is that dropping in as you said mm -hmm. there's a difference between thinking I'm more than enough and truly coming loving that part of you that is consciousness held in unworthiness and not enoughness and mm -hmm. I'm not safe and I don't belong, whatever it is in those lower, lower negative spaces to love that back into whole and truly be able to feel the relief yeah. and the freedom and the wholeness in often, often time, for our clients, this sense of, for the first time, ah, oh, this is what I've been seeking. I've been seeking this. And, you know, sometimes, you know, time and time again when we do this, what we thought we needed to do in order to get what we wanted, you know, sometimes we think, oh, the, the solution is I need to leave my job. The solution is I need to create something else. And the solution is... I have to leave that relationship or whatever, that actually what's getting in the way are those programs, those beliefs, those thoughts actually take us away from what we want and that disconnect to meeting up ourselves and giving it to ourselves is actually what is required, not that external, not that big life change. Not that big, you know, seeking for something else. I've got to climb another mountain in the Himalayas to find that that thing, <laughs> you know, all for climbing mountains. And I'm all for climbing mountains in, in the Himalayas. So are you. So, you know, it's that there's, there's great 
it's so important to get this and, and just to reiterate it because once we realize this, we're going to be tested and it's not just about procrastination. It's this cycle of depletion and there's these patterns that contribute to burnout. When we grow, because that's the natural law of, that's, that's a law of nature. We're constantly evolving, growing, desiring, our consciousness is expanding. We're going to want more, do more, be more. This, these patterns can come up and if we know how to meet them, it's not trying to avoid them to not come up, meet them, love them, then we will find ourselves staying in that space of productivity, success, accomplishment. Yeah, and that makes it a really fun long-term experience. <laughs> so anything else you wanted to add in terms of the mindset piece? I mean, we could keep talking on and on about it, but anything else that you think is really significant for it? Um, I guess like I guess it's just even understanding and letting yourself there's two things I suppose one is giving yourself permission to to actually feel that way about yourself and meet those needs like one of the mindset things that we often see among you know women who are wanting to to move into that space is then this like you know, kind of simultaneous thing that arises when they try, which is, oh my God, like, am I being selfish? Am I, you know, is, is loving myself being selfish kind of thing, that, mm -hmm. that thing. And I, so I think it's good to just acknowledge that and go, okay, that can come up, but that again is also conditioning, you know, that it is not actually selfish to, you know, to share love and compassion with yourself, just like you share love and compassion with everyone else. You mm -hmm. know, when we talk about, oh, we see so many big hearted women, you know, who are so great at being, um, so loving and caring and giving of their energy to to their work to their families to everyone um but you know not as adept at doing that oh. when it comes to the self and so these these other auxiliary programs or you know subsidiary programs come and come up in this and so it's good to acknowledge that and just you know work with that we work with that and we give ourselves permission to move into that space and really try on you know having real love for ourselves um that is just such a powerful i think a powerful move in our lives generally and definitely helps with with procrastination mm. and to help the ego with that um mm. it's that whole like you said try it on okay mm. look sometimes and this is what we we're addressing in our coaching to today was how we can create give power to the story that if I don't give put pressure on myself if I don't yeah. really use that willpower or discipline and pressure and you know like really amped up like come on I just gotta do it yeah then it will get worse or in the past often that is what we can equate to our success I know that when I've led my life from this place of not enoughness, but I've put pressure on myself to perform and drive and succeed. There has been a level of success. I've received that as evidence. And there can be fear to shift, like you said, to let that go, to then come into a space of let's do it in a different way. Exactly. What is it that you want to be feeling when you're when you're feeling productive and you're ticking things off? How is it that you feel? What's the feeling in that? What would you, what are you after to get through all of that paperwork and to-do list and all of that? Okay. And then how do you meet yourself in that process, which we'll talk about strategy in a second. How do you meet yourself in that process to shift it from what you're avoiding and, 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 and it really shift away from that ah oh, hard, like hardcore, come on, just do it, beat yourself up, put more pressure on yourself. Oh, I'm going to avoid, I don't like this feeling, I'm going to avoid. Now there's shame. Now I'm back into that avoidance cycle, procrastination. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, okay, let's just experiment. And today it was just like, just let's just make fun of ourselves. You know, like let's laugh at it. Well, we can continue putting pressure out on ourselves and we can continue really like letting that drive ourselves, drive us. Is it working? Is it really working? Come on. If you're in my classroom, it means, it means that it, there are certainly symptoms of burnout. So therefore, we've got some evidence saying that maybe that's not really how we want to be going about things. It's not to say it's wrong, 
This is that we get to make a different decision and to help with that, to soften that. Oh, yeah, but what if I let this go and then I become really useless? Mm. Let's just test it. Mm. Let's experiment for one week. Let's experiment just focusing on the process, not the outcome. Let's just experiment focusing on the strategy. Let's just focus on loving, loving myself, like, what if we focused that? What if we shifted focus, shifted the rules of engagement, shifted that? What would, what would happen? Where are we going to be in one week's time? And sometimes what can come in is like, okay, well, if I'm loving myself, then I'm not doing any work. <laughs> That's it. And then the pile grows up. And we're not saying that. It's like how to meet yourself better in that process Absolutely. of life, of responsibility of um, needing to cultivate, you know, outcomes as in your career and the rest. Mm. So let's look a little bit into strategy. And you were talking about the reward system mm. and how we can trip ourselves up because now we're getting so much dopamine hit through our Instagram and our Facebook and probably on YouTube where we're on podcasts, whatever you guys are listening to right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're a part of it um and so we can piggyback off that right in yeah. terms of how we want to shift our focus and and strategy when it comes to shifting out of procrastination and being awesome at productivity did you want to speak to that sure sure so i mean dopamine's a big topic nowadays um there's a lot of awareness around um how the you know, the endogenous or internal brain system of dopamine is getting engaged by our technologies, by scrolling, by things like that. And so, you know, it, you know, it's not a bad thing that we have a dopamine system. The dopamine system is the thing that gives us that feeling of pleasure and reward when we set out to do something, you know, and even that drive to do it. So, you know, whenever you get that feeling to like write a list and then tick off that list and that awesome feeling. Yeah. And write a list of a list. It feels so good. <laughs> and even if you haven't put on the list, who here has put it on the list just to tick it off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it feels so good. Right. And that's the that's not a bad thing. We can make that work for us. We're not anti-dopamine. You know, we need dopamine to um, be have a great human experience. You know, it's a, it's a nature. But what happens is, it can, the system itself can, can get us into trouble when we're chasing that hit through, through mechanisms that aren't in alignment with our, with our highest good, with the life that we love, with our health and well-being, whatever it is. So just like, you know, external substances can come and kind of railroad our life because in the short term they give us something and yeah. our brain gets addicted to them. Similarly, our own system, our own endogenous system, we can get addicted to in ways that, you know, the outer world is triggering, like scrolling or whatever it is, so that we're getting that hit and we're getting it in ways that are almost unnatural because it isn't until recent times that we'd have such a dopamine eliciting rich environment in terms of our technologies and things like that. So that's why scrolling and online shopping and all of those things they're almost like, I mean, the, the closest thing we had to it in the past is poker machines. Poker machines work on that same system of reinforcement and, you know, do, 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 do. and it just keeps going, keeps going. And that's yeah. why you look at Instagram or Facebook, there's no end. No it's end. Just constant yeah. scroll, constant, yeah. constant, which is in a way designed with the you know in in alignment to maximize that engagement right yeah, it's there right. i brought the psychology into it to make it yeah. what it is yeah just like just like poker machines they knew this is the most addictive schedule of reinforcement from behavioral psychology so let's let's put it in a machine and you know yeah. make money off it and so yeah. we've got that end of the spectrum but we don't want to be devoid of dopamine in our lives and we're not going to have any like drive or pleasure or reward for anything we oh. do you know, if we take our dopamine system out, then we're going to be pretty, you know, living a lame life. And so what we want to do is we want to get our dopamine system working for us. And so what that means is having an awareness of how it works and then using those structures to actually elicit that reward sense, that feeling towards everything that's in alignment with our values. Then we can couple that understanding, that behavioral science understanding 
with the, you know, with the understanding of our deeper unconscious emotional needs and then put them together in a structure that then is highly reinforcing and meets our deeper, you know, psychological needs um, and our emotional needs to then gear ourselves towards being with ourselves in a way that's sustainable. And so, and also fun, you know? Yeah. I mean, I like, I went through university, like I didn't, I didn't get out of this pattern of procrastination and this, this other gnarly reward cycle that wasn't good for me until my doctorate, you know, until my PhD and doctorate, because I even managed to get through all of undergrad psychology and my honours year running on this other program of procrastination, leaving it to the last minute, you know, drinking copious amounts of Coca-Cola and staying up all night and doing my assignments and then getting, you know, high distinctions. And so getting rewarded for that behaviour. And we all like, you know, we, that's, that's that high achievement. That's that thing where we fall into these cycles. I'm sure we've all had it, you know, if we, if we get to our working career like that, where you cram something, you get it done, you get some reward for that, that, and then you cram onto the next thing and the pressure and the pressure. But of course, what we're seeing is the long-term result of that in the people who are coming through the door with burnout, the long-term result is at some point in time, you're going to reach your ceiling of your physiological capacity, your mental capacity and your emotional emotional capacity for this program. It's not actually sustainable. So it might take some people two years, some people five years, some people 10 years of running on this and then there's burnout, you know, then it doesn't work. Then it's not mentally, emotionally or physically capable to continue you know it's not rewarding even though we don't know another way and so you know when we start to move into these strategies what we're looking at is how to shift gears into breaking things down into you know bite-sized chunks into bite size bite size to all the perfectionists out there when we say bite size we mean bite size yeah (laughs) i mean in time management there's this whole system of the pomodoro technique which is like Um, this system of basically breaking things down into 20 minute cycles, having a five minute break and only doing three of those cycles. And that's been shown to be super product, you know, to, to help with productivity. Now, one of the special things about, I guess, what we do with that is we bring in that science, but then we also add these other layers of understanding. So we're not just using basic time management, Pomodoro technique or whatever strategy it is, you know, we're changing our whole, mindset and the way we are with ourselves and then using some of these strategies that have been shown to be effective and the combination of those things you know it's like when we really connect with our you know our emotional needs and relate to ourselves in such a way that we're full of compassion and celebration when we do these you know things that are then friendly to our dopamine system you know these bite-sized chunks are they're going to be great because if we set out to do a task like writing a doctoral thesis, for example, and we say, I can't be happy until the end of that, or I've got some huge project at work, or I've got some, you know, I can't um, rest. I can't enjoy life. I can't feel successful until my PhD is done and dusted. That's right. Or until I get this promotion or until this project at work's done, which is a nine month project of, you know, whatever. Until I get my entire to-do list completed yeah, that's, that's probably right. the big one right big like one. i can't one. feel satisfied or successful or accomplished or certain there's one of our big needs certain yeah. until i've ticked everything off my to-do list that's it and the problem with that theory is that life always puts something in our inbox you know yeah. and so we go through life perpetually not feeling satisfied feeling in the state of mobilization of anxiety you know the stress state because we're thinking well i'll just be happy after i get this thing done then what about this thing and the yeah. next day, i can't go to bed until i do this i can't have that those threads of uncertainty or whatever it has to be all neat and nighty not neat neat and tidy or nighty so that i can then rest and so it is good to shift yeah your approach yeah. and mindset with that That's it. and so what what we do you know strategically is is help people with that and really help these bunk, bite-sized chunks come into play with lots of celebration lots of reward genuine connection with ourselves. and it can be a mind blower for you know the perfectionist in us all where we're like what like what do you mean celebrate this like tiny thing that's to a perfectionist almost insultingly like <laughs> <you know? laughs> 
I'm and thinking of so can. many different exactly. clients right now. It's so true, yeah. right? <laughs> it works. And that's the awesome thing. I mean, I was the same. I was like, what? You want me to like, <laughs> you know, you want me to talk to myself and go like, what do I mean? Like, isn't that, Yay. Yes. Isn't that arrogant? Isn't that this? I had all that resistance. And then when, you know, years ago, when, when, when I started practicing this for myself to begin with, I just, you know, it was like kind of trying on new different type of clothing or something, but it worked so quickly, you know, and then I felt so much better in the journey, yes. you know, so there's two things going on. One is, you know, the outcome at the end is that we are more productive. Like we get even, we are becoming more productive than what we thought we could be doing the hard work and whipping ourselves. Just keep and, going. I'm not going to go to the toilet. I'm not going to have anything yeah. to eat. I'm just going to keep yeah. slogging on until I get it done. <laughs> We're more productive than that. But yes. the, the cool thing is, is that the journey is also more enjoyable. <laughs> uh -huh. you know? so, and we, and, and because of that, we're lifting ourselves. Like when we're saying celebrate, like, we, yeah, like meet yourself, go have a cup of tea, go have a little boogie. It doesn't have to be a big, like timey time, like a long time that you're away and a lengthy experience. It's like just something simple. And then when you come back, you'll be able to, in my experience, we see things differently. Even That's in awesome. that 20 minutes, we're still rocking. It's awesome. But, and it is a nice amount of time. But when we come back, it's like, oh gosh, I needed that. That was great. All right. Where was I? Oh, oh, that doesn't sound quite right. Let's, there we go. Yeah. And it's just yeah. not just about productivity. It's about ease. It's about flow. And it's about, you know, the standards, like what you're capable of. It's about how to really tap into your potential, mm -hmm. into a power, which comes when we're more in our center, which comes when we are in our center, when it, it comes when we're in that state of joy and enjoyment. It doesn't come when we're slogging and distorted and really in a state of stress. And so that's where we change it from not just procrastination, but it's just like this experience of oh, grind to actually, wow, the same task, the same job project, but a whole different experience. And one that can be so rich and so um, deeply, deeply satisfying. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is this is the thing. And, it, and it's like, why, why are we even, you know, why do our PhD? Why for me do my master's? Why, why become a doctor? Why move jobs, change business? And it's like, what are we truly seeking? What are we truly seeking? And when we're clear on what it is, for instance, if we, just as a different example so people can understand, like we think we buy a home for security and then we buy a home or significance, but we buy a home, do we always experience security, a sense of security when we buy a home? No, my experience was like now I've got a mortgage. <laughs> now I have even more insecurity, but I thought buying a home would give me security. What I was actually seeking was security and it's not in that process of buying a home. Yes, I know, fortunately for a vast majority of us living in Australia, we have a level of security that we take for granted. And I'm talking about a true sense of security, which is something that we get to cultivate. Same with this, same with our projects, same with outcomes that we're striving for to do to and stopping and going, wow, what is it really that I'm after? And how do I cultivate? How do I experience that and tap into that? And so if you're wanting to feel productive, connect with it, connect with that feeling and bring that into the celebration. Like, oh, you get to notice and appreciate, I got this one thing done and I'm going to celebrate it. Like it's 90.99 with Prince. This is awesome. I'm going to celebrate it and just do it as an experiment and see what happens. Mm. See what happens. I think, did you have anything else that you wanted to add about that, Dr. Shagatambe? Otherwise, there's another point that I'd like to bring up. Anything yeah. else about the pom Pomodoro Doro <laughs> technique? No. So, you know, in terms of strategy, it could be so many different things that you could do to really help with productivity. It could be bite-sized chunk celebrations. 
The thing that we want you to take away is often the solution, you know the solution. You don't need to read another book about the the strategy pieces of productivity. By doing the mindset and the heart set and vibrational piece of it, and it allows you to come back where the solution lies. And it might be that you realise your priorities are out of alignment. Your priority might be, oh, goodness, I really want to work on a new business. I've really got to work on my business. I've really got to do this piece of my business. And then, but, you know, you might also have other commitments. Family, you might be the number one um, house elf, you know. There might be these other commitments. And when you tune in, you might actually determine, oh, okay, number one priority is actually my family. Fine. In the mornings, you may need to get your kids up and get them to school, and that's your number one priority. However, if your business, if your career, if writing a book, if something else, a project is a priority of yours, you get to choose this, then what you might recognise is that you're putting other commitments over the top of this. So you're focusing on doing all the housework because I've got to, I should. What would other people think of me if I'm spending time focusing on my career or on this, this uh, art? I'm an artist and what, but I, you know, I, I shouldn't prioritize this because I really should be the best housewife or whatever, you know, the stories we tell ourselves. And so what happens is that our priority of what we really want to do gets pushed down the list. And it's as simple as giving ourselves space to be like, you know what, it's a priority of mine right now is to get my business up and running. And I give myself permission to do that. And the solution is I get my kids off to school and I sit down and I work on my business for two, three hours, and then I'll do the housework. Just as an example, it could be as simple as that. The strategy could be as simple as restructuring your day, realigning your priorities with your day. It could be anything, but at the end of the day, the power comes where you tune in, doing the meeting yourself, really discovering what it is that is at play for you, why you're in this pattern of procrastination. Because when you, when you meet that, then you'll be able to come out of that and see for yourself exactly what's required to get you productive, to get you moving forward. You know, it could be that actually I don't do work at night. For me to be productive, most productive is that five o'clock comes and I know for certain that the solution is not bringing work home for me me because I can see the pattern. And it could be that could be the strategy piece. And we see that, don't we, Dr. J? &J? Like actually people in that whole like (laughs) procrastination, push, 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 and life's really hard and nothing I'm getting in my own way and I'm not getting stuff done, but it's spilling out. Mm -hmm. Now I've got wide but tired at night. This is where I'm going to work the best, but it's the problem spills over to the next day and the cycle Mm -hmm. keeps playing out that actually the solution for you to become most productive might be prioritise sleep and not do work at, at home. Definitely. It could be 101 different things, but celebrating and enjoying the journey and bringing that into the process and chunking it down and getting started on little things, little bite size. How do you eat an elephant? Such a horrible saying. How do you eat an elephant? One, one spoonful at a time. We don't eat elephants. We love elephants. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's really... Um, there's a lot of magic, a lot of magic in it. There is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you guys are resonating with this and you are ready to, you know, look at this, explore it on a deeper level and come to know yourself in such a, a deep loving way and love yourself so that you can get shit done and be great in the world and truly release the handbrake and give yourself permission to fully shine and turn up and blaze, then reach out because our team would love to have a conversation with you, to meet you, help you, uh, support you to get clarity and determine, hey, are we a good fit to work together? And if so, it could be that first step of the next chapter of life where you are 
really creating and showing up and really expanding and expanding and experiencing life and enjoying life right now, not just one day. And so I encourage you to, to do that. Yes. Yes. yes, yes <laughs> All right. Oh, Wonderful. Yeah. So from our hearts. Thanks for having me. And yeah, yes. love to everyone. Yeah, be be really awesome to to see more people enjoying life. That's the aim of the game, right? One hundred percent. All right, guys, take care. Wishing you all the best, and hoping that helps, and you get to take that away and shift your procrastination into being productive or loving yourself and getting shit done. All right, take care. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. If you would like to subscribe and keep in touch, then click on my head and you'll subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to book a call with our team for an amazing life-changing experience, then click on the button beneath this, which is book a clarity session, or go to our website, findingbliss.com.au forward slash apply, and be sure to fill out a short application form to secure the opportunity. Awesome. Stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you on our next session. Big love.